All right. Um, hi, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Michel Salim, and I'm a production engineer at uh, Meta working on Linux user space. Uh, this is a follow up talk on the talk I presented at um, uh, FOSDEM last year um, about using eBranch uh, to bring over federal packages to Apple. Uh, David, next slide, please. So we'll, I'll, I'll go a bit quickly over like uh, over the introduction since uh, you can watch uh, the talk from last year um, and it's basically unchanged in the in terms of time since we are running a bit late already. But basically, uh, next slide. What makes Apple uh, special? And what makes it special? Um, next slide, please. Is um, basically. Um, in Fedora, you bring in packages um, uh, one at a time, and um, and basically they just get um, uh, rebuilt uh, for every new uh, Fedora releases automatically. Uh, whereas, like uh, with uh, Enterprise Linux, since Red Hat is supporting uh, the packages uh, for uh, for a very long time, right, for about ten years or more, uh, only a very only a relatively small subset of packages um, actually. Um, are taken from Fedora and branched for uh, Enterprise Linux. And any other package that's not um, available can be packaged as part of uh, ent of the Apple repo, extra packages for Enterprise Linux. It's kind of similar to how, like, a long time ago, um, after Red Hat Linux, you get Fedora Core, and uh, which is maintained by Red Hat employees, and Fedora Extras, which is maintained by the community. Uh, next slide, please. So. Yeah, like um, as I mentioned earlier, Fedora releases uh, basically um, are much shorter lived than CentOS releases, and uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux releases are even longer, which basically like uh, you don't really want to maintain old package for a very long time unless you have to. Especially given that Rel has uh, stability guarantees, meaning you cannot just um, upgrade to the most recent version of package and you might have to backport security fixes. Uh, next slide. And basically, um, when you package for Fedora, like a individual Fedora contributor might basically be saying, like, "Hey, I want to package the latest and greatest stuff. I'm not signing up to uh, basically maintain um, security updates for a package for ten years." Um, next slide: um, Apple workflows. So basically, um, uh, uh, everything starts when uh, there's a new uh, CentOS uh, stream version that's available. And not long afterwards, um, you branch CentOS for, um, you, you branch like a, you make a new Apple um, uh, branch and it starts off empty basically um, because like uh, Fedora packages are not um, up. You have to opt in uh, for your package to be available for any given enterprise Linux uh, version. Uh, can we skip to uh, populating Apple uh, slide? So basically the workflow is that you have a package that you want that's not in CentOS stream and you say, oh, okay, like I, I actually need to use this. Uh, let me let me uh, try to get it branched for Apple. If you're not the maintainer, you have to ask the maintainer to like uh, to uh, to branch it for you. Uh, and then, like, uh, you might say, like, oh, well, like, uh, this package cannot actually be built right now because it has, like, uh, missing dependencies. And then you have to iterate um, for all the missing dependencies, and then you find they have missing dependencies. Uh, can we move to the stale requests uh, slide? And another problem is that um, you... This, this are uh, community maintained, right? Like, uh, and some people basically... Uh, Either like uh, don't check Bugzilla often, or like uh, they they are not interested in Apple and they don't know like um, uh, how to deal with like a uh, with a request that they that they don't care about. Um, and uh, for for general federal package maintenance, sometimes like uh, basically for mass rebuilds or for if there's an urgent issue that uh, that the maintainer is not fixing, um, the proven packages uh, can actually uh, do it for them. But proven packages cannot actually have branch packages for um, because that's not what it's meant for. Um, so as part of this, uh, to solve this problem, uh, we have this uh, new procedure now 
well, we have had this for like over a year and it's been working quite well, uh, called fault um, requests. Uh, so basically you ask um, for a package rebranch and if there is no action, eventually uh, we can basically ask for like uh, the someone else uh, and preferably like also the packages SIG to be added to the ACL so we can do it. So, so that address one side of the problem that basically means like um, for any package that you don't have permission for, there is a um, bounded time in which you are pretty much guaranteed to eventually have access to the package. The next problem is, um, uh, can we go to page 15, uh, the quote from Troy? Uh, so basically, uh, your dependency chain might be like a very deep. Um, this quote talks about like a chain that basically goes like a four level deep, but I've actually seen uh, chains that are over 10 and I should have save uh, the example but i don't have it right now so you want to automate this obviously right um so with ebranch uh can we go to the features um, page uh, slide 16. um ebranch can do like uh what it what can do for you is it can calculate the recursive dependencies of a package it will tell you like how to actually uh, do a chain build of all of its packages in the right order so you get parallelism um this works most of the time. Sometimes you have dependency cycles. Um, so like ebranch will also basically, uh, tell you if there are dependency loops and say, hey, you know, like uh, there's this loop, so you can actually build these packages. And it also uh, lets you uh, file branch requests for like the missing dependencies uh, using the templates that are um, standardized. Um, let's go to the walk to slide, uh, page 18. So if you type ebranch and um, it will tell you how to use it, there are uh, three, there are two groups of comments right now, like uh, dependencies and issues. Um, slide 19. Uh, so for example, if you're, if you're saying, hey, um, I want to branch uh, before um, this Python before package for Apple 9, it will tell you, uh, well, it was telling me this plus here because it's not package. Um, it uh, it requires uh, the uh, the KIM uh, PY and that end. and it also tells you which dependency was requested and uh, what uh, source package uh, actually satisfied that dependency. Um, can you go to slide twenty? In case um, your dependencies themselves um, have dependencies, what you can do is like uh, you unfold and say like, hey, um, the dependencies that I found like um. Like I want to now like do the calculation for them, and you can clean up um, and say like, oh, actually, like um, I know this event is actually available. Uh, say like uh, it's already part of your um, site tag, but you have not actually like uh, released it yet. You can prune uh, the new list, and then you can do an iteration to actually then like uh, compute like uh, the missing dependencies for any new dependency you have, and eventually get a stable state and and there's no new dependency to discover. Um, slide 21. You, uh, you can then say like, hey, you know, like, um, I want to file a request um, for like, uh, for this package. And you can mark it as like, um, saying like, oh, this is a blocker for like another, um, for another issue that you've already filed before, or an existing issue. You can optionally say like, "Hey, I want to uh, be able. I want to comment in this package." Uh, then you basically provide your uh, Fedora account ID, and you can also say, "Hey, uh, please also add the uh, the Apple packages SIG to the ACL by passing the dash dash SIG." Uh, next, uh, chain building slide twenty two. Um, then you can basically say, "Hey, uh, Ebranch, like, uh, tell me how to chain build um, all these dependencies." And it will tell you, oh, okay, like um, this is like a chain build invocation. It's almost like what we need to pass with FedPKG chain build, except that um, FedPKG chain build expect, expect to be called for one of the repos, um, like um, in the final group. So you just basically go there first and take out the last uh, component from the, from the chain build string. Um, slide 23, RPM distro repo query. 
So this is what uh, eBranch used to actually um, do the do the querying to see what's available, like in uh, in say like a sample S versus what's available on Rawhide. Um, the initially uh, when I did this last year, I was actually shipping my own repo files and just marking them as disabled by default, which um, can be a problem. Like uh, say like um, someone run DNF uh, with like a enable repo star, it will it will enable all this, uh, it will enable dependencies that you might not actually um, want to have. Um, so RPM repo query is a project started by Neil Gompa, um, since he works on a lot of distributions. It um, supports a lot of distributions um, from Fedora to CentOS to, uh, to OpenSUSE and Magia. And the repo definitions go to a different location. So there is no chance of DNF accidentally using it by default. All right, um, so let's talk about real life uh, usages of uh, eBranch. Um, slide 25, please. So this is uh, what I've been using it for uh, the past year also. Um, these are all like, uh, this, these are the stats for like all the new packages I added to body for Apple Night. Um, there's like uh, 749 packages since uh, January the 1st uh, last year. And as you can see, most of them are actually Rust packages. Uh, slide 26. So basically like, um, um, you, as you can see, like I, you know, like uh, before, before November last year, uh, this is basically uh, before I uh, implemented um, chain build support in, um, in eBranch. It's like uh, it's not really feasible before to actually uh, package um, basically uh, to add packages to Apple that has a huge number of dependencies um, until you automate the process. Uh, slide 27. Uh, okay, so these are some examples of actual updates um, in Apple that are done using uh, eBranch. Um, that's new. Uh, is, uh, DPF based tool to actually uh, trace uh, Linux kernel internals. Uh, this one brings in a total of 189 packages. I had to split the update into uh, several chunks just because someone told me that uh, otherwise like a uh, body might uh, kill over uh, if the update is over 200 packages. Um, and then like uh, Ref1E is a dependency for FFmpeg and that one is a total of 152 packages. And there's a bunch of others. Um, basically, it's not that um, the packages have uh, themselves have a pretty close number of uh, immediate dependencies. It's just that the dependency depend on other dependencies. And sometimes, like uh, even for a single project in um, Rust, you need to build it like uh, in three stages. First, you build some like uh, derived macros, and then you build like uh, some core thing, and then like you build something else on top. And it's you, you don't go through this problem in Fedora mostly because uh, most of the dependencies are already there. But when you start with Apple, it's a, it's a greenfield and you have to bring in everything. The good news is, as you can see, like the number of packages are trending down because more and more pack dependencies are already there. Uh, slide 28. So there are some known issues right now and there are some workarounds you can do for them. Um, Rust, uh, most, Rust, most Rust packages are actually just uh, source packages uh, because Rust is statically linked. Uh, you ship the source um, for, the, for, for most grids and you only actually ship binaries if you are actually uh, shipping some uh, tools. Uh, the problem is that this means um, some sub packages actually like uh, have dependencies that you only discover when you try to install them because uh, they might not be, um, if it's not compiled as part of running tests, then like we don't actually have to build dependency for it. Um, so like uh, you can use mock with um, post install basically to, so when you're building locally, you make sure that anything you build can actually be installed. Uh, the problem is that this takes time, uh, especially if you have 100 dependencies to do. Um, so in the future, like I'm um, working on adding install time dependencies um, support uh, to um, eBranch. Uh, the other alternative is that you chain build everything since, you know, like uh, eBranch will tell you everything you need to build this thing anyway. 
just that some of your dependencies might have sub packages that you cannot install yet. Create a body update and then basically uh, download it and try to install and then like uh, chase the missing dependencies. Um, the problem here is that like some people might expect the update to be ready and then they, and then they give you negative karma because like, oh, this update doesn't actually install. Uh, next slide, slide 29. Uh, the other problem is uh, how do you deal with dependency cycles? Uh, in Rust, it's easy. Again, because uh, creates almost installs only, you can just cheat and like uh, tag the rawhide packages to your site tag and then rebuild them and then untag the rawhide packages. With Python, you uh, with when you're working with branching Python packages, you cannot because um, uh, they install to different paths uh, depending on the system Python version. So you have to disable um, some optional features so that like uh, you break the loop and then like build and then you can re-enable them, which is extra tricky if uh, the package is RPM auto spec uh, because then like your release number will be out of sync unless you bootstrap an older version and then. Um, and then like um, break the dependency loop, and then like you can uh, you can package a new version after. So uh, one thing that really helps um, uh, slide thirty um, is like a, a lot of language ecosystems, especially um, uh, newer ones like uh, GoLang and uh, Rust. Uh, basically, they have uh, fast code policies that say, hey, when you have a Go package. Um, you must add the special interest group to the ACL so they can maintain the package. Um, with uh, Python, uh, it's optional. Like uh, you can grant the Python packages SIG access to your uh, to your package, but it's not mandatory. And with Apple, it's also like not currently um, required. Although we are, we probably should consider this because it it will make bring ups much easier. Um, slide thirty one. So eBranch is now packaged in Fedora and Apple all the way to Apple 8, and you can just install it with uh, DNF install eBranch. Um, the, one of the components that I use to detect dependency uh, cycles, unfortunately, pulls in a lot of um, optional dependencies. So you might want, if you don't want to install anything else, you can just uh, set the option to disable uh, weak dependencies. Um, page 32. Yeah, um, so like, um, uh, I could definitely use feedback. Like, um, like, uh, I'm a bit unhappy with the way, like, uh, some comments are grouped and named right now. And like, uh, there are probably things that I haven't thought of about how to, like, um, improve the workflow. And if anyone wants to submit PRs, like, I, I will gladly accept them. Um, slide 34. So let's talk about what uh, feature works um, I'm uh, planning to add. Um, install time dependencies, uh, as I mentioned before, like uh, it's an issue, uh, especially with Rust packages. It's uh, it's a bit expensive. Like uh, I know how to do it, but so but like uh, so basically you have to say like hey you know like uh, say you are missing source package A, you have to check raw height and see like which um, which binary packages uh, are derived from the source package. And then you have to check all of them, like, um, hey, uh, what are your uh, missing uh, install time requirements? And basically um, add them, uh, like, uh, and then like add them and like analyze them uh, recursively. The nice thing is that install time dependencies uh, basically can be like, uh, can be built at the same stage as the package that required them, because you only need them like at the next stage when you try to install them anyway. Uh, page 35. So one feature I have not implemented is um, basically, hey, given this uh, report that has like 100 missing dependencies listed, um, automate filing branch requests for all of them. And the reason I have not is uh, is that currently there is no way, the tool doesn't know how to check if there's an existing branch request yet. The problem is that um, branch request issues might not be uniformly like um, you know like, uh, detecting them is uh, is a hard problem because uh, they they are not standard right like uh, anyone can follow a request for a branch with like a slightly different wording so like when I implement this it might have to be interactive like 
like that Debian report bug uh, to like you have to say like hey um I I find something that can be a that might be a match is this what you want or like do you want to follow a new one and there's currently no check uh, for um, checking if a package is actually in centralized stream or not but uh, that uh, that might require integrating with Fedora's uh, PDC. Um, next slide, 36. So once we have, um, once we add the ability to file like um, multiple branch requests at the same time, um, one one other issue that uh, we have is that, um, say, you know, you end up with 50 uh, branch requests. It's 50 bugs that you have to keep track of and then like, um, to follow the stalled procedure then like um, after a week you have to you have to ping and say like hey you know like are you like um are you working on this or like uh, do you want to give me access and then after another two weeks then you have to like do the escalation and say hey um the package maintainer doesn't want to deal with this package can i get access to it so this can be automated uh, and it currently is not automated um page 37 uh, the page number might be off by one. I'm sorry, since I added the slide uh, after I after David downloaded it. Uh, a refactor that we are uh, that I'm considering in the future is um, a like uh, the dependency resolution might uh, be useful as a standalone library, or basically like a or e branch can be used as that. And right now it's shelling out uh, to DNF um, or it's shelling out to repo query, which is basically a wrapper on DNF. Um, when DNF five is up, it might be, it will be a bit faster if we can just uh, use the Python API instead of shelling out each time. All right, um, resources, which I think on the PDF is like thirty eight. So there are some links here, basically to see like uh, to learn more about Apple, how you can get involved with Apple, uh, the packages SIG, and the link to the eBranch and RPM Distro uh, repo query projects. And yeah, uh, that's it. Um, um, I can take questions now. Uh, Davide, if you can uh, repeat the questions, that'd be useful. Any questions in the room? Do we have any questions on that? There's nothing online. All right. Well, thank you. I don't know if you can hear us clap, but I guess we'll do it anyway. That's <laughs>